What is up you guys, Damage here back with some more books to give me today guys I will be talking about Loki episode 1 Now before we get into this video, please be sure to leave a like on this video and also subscribe if you're new Now let's get right on into it Actually it opens after the events of Endgame and we actually get to see Loki um, find out that he's in big trouble by the TVA And I gotta say shout out to Wumi Musaku Hopefully I said her last name right, but she was also in Lovecraft Country and she actually was in Batman vs Superman, interestingly enough. But um, yeah, shout out to her for getting more work because she's just a great actress. Um, but anyway, moving forward, uh, we actually get to see him getting captured by the TVA because he has broken his timeline. My only question, is the TVA like not human like the workers in the place i think they're not really human if we're going by the show i i don't know i don't know let me know in the comment section down below but we get to see her take him in and for trial and i really like the fact that they really made it a point that the tesseract and all the infinity stones in this episode means nothing to this type of reality but we actually get to see him having to sign everything he's ever said because he talks way too much. Uh, and we actually get to notice that in this episode. Um, I actually think that's the only con about this episode is that it talk, I mean, it goes on for way too much uh, dialogue. But anyway, we actually get to see Minute. And guess who is played by? Tara Strong. She actually is a great voice actor. You guys don't know her resume? Look it up. Look it up, please. It's great. But anyway, we actually get to see this company explain because the timekeepers made this um, company to keep everything in order in the way of time. And I really like this anime short. It was very fun to watch. But anyway, we actually get to see it really will cause a nexus if everything doesn't go the way it's planned um, and somebody veer off into love. But we actually know one other person that is Nexus, and that is Wanda. So I'm actually wondering why they didn't try to interrupt Wanda during the whole Hex situation, since she is a Nexus being, and tried to correct it. But I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. Hopefully we get that explained later down the line. But we actually get to see him stand trial. And I actually think this was a great scene. I actually like um, Goo and Batha Ra. She's been a lot of things, but um, yeah, she's great as the judge. And I think it looks like she has some ulterior motive. Is it just me that got that vibe? Is it just me? But I think she's just a great addition to the cast as well. But moving on, um, Owen Wilson's character, I actually like him. He's very great in this series. Probably the best he's ever been to me in anything. But um. He has this brilliant idea to bring Loki on for this case that he is trying to figure out why people are dying, well, people of his team are dying, and why it keeps having each and every place in time. Um, I actually like the back and forth and the time hopping they have access to as workers of the time variant authority, but that was very great, I think so. But anyway, in very Loki fashion, he also breaks out for a minute. For a minute, let's be honest. Um, and also, finds the Tesseract, and he actually finds that it really does nothing. This timeline, well, I guess this pocket reality, um, it does nothing here. It really doesn't really matter. There's literally many of Infinity Stones here, and they just collect it uh, because it really does nothing for them. And I really did like that aspect about the show because, again, the Infinity Stones was really the basis of the Infinity Saga, so. Um, those is very great to me, but moving on Loki goes back where he can actually see everything in his timeline and how he died Even that he killed his well basically set up his mother to get killed and also he saw his father die as well So yeah, that was very traumatic and also I think it was very well played out in this series But come to think of it, I wonder why they didn't show Thor complete reaction of him dying um, they show him cradling his brother as he died, but yeah, I wonder why. I don't know, but he died to protect his brother, but yeah. He made that ultimate sacrifice to protect his brother, so I mean, I guess they implied that, but I don't know. But now Loki is willing to help the TVA and Owen Wilson come back and explains to him that they need help on this case and it's actually just to catch him. Um, in a different timeline, I'm guessing. 
and then we get to see about the TVA going to, I believe, 1958 um, to see what is happening in this timeline. And also, we get to actually see them die um, by Loki. Now, I just got to say, I cannot wait to next episode. I think this was a great first episode to the series and what's in store. Um, yeah, now I'm loving it. Now, let me get my thoughts on the series so far because um, it's only just the first episode. I think it's better rounded than WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. My opinion may change after, I mean, towards the ending of this series. But honestly, this series felt more like a movie out of all of them. And honestly, the last two kind of felt like Marvel Netflix's TV shows. And that's not bad. However, I really would like for the TV series to be more like movies. But you know, we can actually chop that up to the pandemic, hopefully. Uh, we'll see after the next couple of shows that come out. Um, those two literally have to be completed during like the early stages of the pandemic. So hopefully that was the reason why it was kind of unbalanced for me, especially that in the Unbound Division. But we're not gonna get into it. We're not going into it. Let me know your thoughts on this episode in the comment section down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like on this video. Also, subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys soon for more videos. Peace.